It's just an observation. But, you know, we've talked about, you know, factors before. We talked about COVID. We talked about the rise of inflation with, you know, gas and food yep. and stuff like that. So all of that stuff plays into, you know, effect of, of why things are starting to drop again. But Let me I ask mean, you a question that I find very interesting because this is goes right into what you're saying. Mm-hmm. You just mentioned inflation. Are, at, if you guys don't know, West owns a retro is a part owner of a retro game store. At your store, now that inflation's hitting, we're coming out of the pandemic. Obviously, are you seeing more trade ins happen now? Um, actually, you know what? Yes, I am. I, I, sounds I am. right. Um, people are bringing in like collections. Like you know, we've had. Uh, Nintendo 64 collections. We've had, you know, uh, I had 360 collections. A guy had like 50 360 games. You know, we had a, a guy drop off like uh, like 25 PlayStation games. So yeah, no, people are people are starting to, you know, like start to sell that stuff again. Right, because they need money for, for gas. Because mm-hmm. your, your dollar doesn't go as far, you know. Mm-hmm. They see the prices falling. They're like, well, I better get rid of this now before it falls even more, you know. A lot yeah. of different factors to think about. Definitely, definitely. But, you know, we do have a couple of examples of, of how, you know, the ups and downs of 2022 pricing goes. Yeah, so these titles are ones that we've either mentioned before or thought would kind of be interesting or relative to look at now. In fact, one, two, three, the first four have all been ones we've mentioned before, and the fifth one is a new one, just for a comparison, because we, we thought that game was really popular on GameCube. And just kind of wanted to see what has happened in the past six months. So the two prices we bring up are going to be from July of 2022 mm-hmm. and December, uh, well, end of November, beginning of December of 2022. The first one up is, is one of my titles that I've been tracking since even before Wes was here, just because I started talking about some retro game prices. And it's it's actually a game I want to own, but I will never pay this price for it. So I'm probably never going to own this game, but it's I, I just like looking at it. And that is a complete in-box copy of Little Samson. This is for the NES, of course. $5,616 back in July. Mm-hmm. Currently, 5371 So it lost you know, roughly a little less than $300 in the past six months, which isn't major, but still kind of significant because Little Samson is a truly you know, rare game on the NES. It's very uncommon and hard to find, especially complete in-box. So, I don't know. Does that surprise you, or what do you think? <laughs> you know, Little Samson is is one of those titles that I think, even though the price may dip a little bit, it's always going to be expensive. Yes. Because it's so rare. You know, it's the scarcity of that cartridge. It's it, it's going to keep that price high. Um, and, and when I say high, I'm talking a couple thousand dollars, you know, if it dips a couple hundred, it is what it is, but it's, I think it's loose still, ones are over 1500. Yeah. It's still, you know, that's still expensive <laughs> Yeah, for, for a game. Yeah. Especially when, <laughs> when you could just download the ROM and play it like. and play it. I know. <laughs> But that's not the point, you know. The point is like having the original game play through the original hardware, yeah, the way that it was intended. Anyway, if I'm gonna play Little Samson, it's probably gonna be through emulation. Okay. <laughs> same, same here. <laughs> A game that won't be played through emulation, at least for you, because you already mentioned you picked it up. Mm-hmm. Resident Evil on Saturn. Where are we at with that? Oh man! So I, I told you it, you know, it dropped like several hundred dollars because um, when I picked it up, it was two seventy five. Uh, so, but now, uh, price in July it dropped even further. Uh, to it was two forty in July, and now pretty, pretty close to what you were paying. Eh, it not, wasn't not bad. Too far off. No, um, but now, as of let's say you know end of November, early December, twenty twenty two, you know, it dropped even further to two oh seven. Mm. And that's complete in box, correct? Just so everybody com- knows. Correct. That's complete in box. So, you know, it's just it's it's again another indicator that that prices are starting to slowly creep down. 
Yeah, especially Saturn, man. Because, I mean, most Saturn games are, like, not all of them are uncommon, but there's many uncommon or rare games on the Saturn, which is why a lot of their games are really expensive. Plus, the emulation for Saturn is notoriously sucking. So, like, if you really want to play a Saturn game, you need to have a Saturn in the disc. Yeah. No, I agree. Saturn games in general were always kind of expensive. Yeah. For the most part, yeah, they were kind of expensive, but, you know, is 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 two hundred dollars expensive? You know, it's it's definitely not six hundred. So I'm happy. <laughs> it's definitely not fifteen hundred or whatever the hell a loose cart for a little. I would buy a loose cart for a little Samson. So it's definitely not that. <laughs> I mean, I would, but I would never pay that much. Which is, you know, I'd have to find the day I buy a little Samson is the day I like find it at a garage sale or something and like. Somebody's like, oh, it's $5. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Which is probably never going to happen, you know, but that's the day. Know. I get it. You never know. Another title that we've talked about before uh, on actually the past couple times we talked about pricings was one that I have in my collection, uh, Panzer Dragoon Saga for the Saturn. And it, it is still sealed. But so it, this it, is the sealed price that we're going to discuss just correct. because of this factor. Correct. That's one that has, I've seen some dips in 2022. I've seen it rise a little bit, seen it dip. But when it, when it dips, it, it will dip to like a thousand. <laughs> but in, in July, a sealed copy was, was 1200. So this is like one of those instances where the price went up. So like now, as of November, December, 2022, it's, it's 1700. So this I mean, is, you know, we're talking about price dropping, but in this case, it went up. Yeah, I mean, this just makes sense to me, personally. You have a very uncommon or, or rare game on the Saturn that's sealed. Yes, the price is going to go up. Pre-pandemic doesn't matter. Like, when you have a true, like, it goes back to Little Samson, right? Little Samson's price dropped a little bit. I don't. I wouldn't be surprised if in a month or two it goes back up because it is a very uncommon or rare game. People know that it's an uncommon or rare game and it's going to be sold after by collectors for many different reasons. Also, it's a good game, you know, so that's also in play and that should drive the price back up for games like Little Samson. It should continue to make your uh, sealed copy of Panzer Dragoon rise, in my opinion. That rise might be slow. It might dip and go back up, but I don't think you're going to see a massive drop for a game like that. No, uh, plus two. I, I think as a, as a whole, sealed items are becoming more and more scarce, especially especially back then. I would say that today, if you look at the common systems that are out now, right, like even last generation PS4, PS5, Xbox One. Xbox Series X, Nintendo Switch. Looking at those consoles, right? What's happened, they, they've created like a... <laughs> it's it's kind of weird to talk about. So limited run games, when they started, they, their games were actually limited. Very limited. And those games are pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. Now they do open pre-orders. Almost all of these, these, these sites, there's... Strictly limited, limited run, special reserve. Um, there's a bunch of them. It doesn't matter. Almost all of them do open pre-orders now, which they give you a 30-day window, mm -hmm. and you can pre-order the game if you want it. That's really caused people out there that, that are speculating in the market to buy these games and then to try to resell them, and it's keeping the value at about what they paid for them. However, if you look at the titles earlier, that if you didn't hit limited run at 7 a.m. Pacific time on that Wednesday that, that game came out, you're done. You didn't get the game. You weren't there on <laughs> at zero hour. So sorry. Those games are still expensive. Those games are still hard to get. The other ones aren't so much because they're, they were for a niche market. The niche market bought the game, and then the resellers bought the game. And then you have other people who aren't resellers and didn't want the game to begin with. That market's flat 
Like, <laughs> those games sell for what they sell for. Yes, they do. You know, sometimes you'll see some stuff up and down. But my, my point in saying this is, you know, every kind of market is a little bit different. And the games today, like those limited, those limited games aren't really limited anymore because the market is fulfilled. Does that make sense? <laughs> oh, I follow you, man. I okay. follow you. Oh, I follow you. You know, I, you know, like I, I was saying how, you know, sealed games are just becoming more scarce and, it, you know, because it's like the people, old. Yes, that's what was my point. Yes. The old sealed games are becoming Correct. rare, not new sealed games. Correct. Because we bought games to play. Exactly. We cracked them open and played. It. Now, the the fluke chance that I, my Panzer Dragoon is still sealed is because I bought it. I knew I was going to play it right away, but then I kind of overlooked it and started buying and playing other stuff. So it sat on my shelf. No, I'm with you. That's why it's still sealed. But people bought games and they opened them up and they played them right away. And that's how it should be. But The big reason you and I have old sealed games is because we wanted to play everything. So we bought all sorts of shit and we just never got around to probably a quarter or a half of what we bought. Yeah, which is so true. Man, we spent so much money on games. It's not even funny. And I can play half of them. No, it's true. But we didn't buy them because we didn't buy them back in like the 90s being like, oh, these are going to be worth money. We bought them. Oh, I got to play this. Exactly. But you bought, you happened to also buy six other games that month. And you were like, well, I can only play one of these because that's all the time I have. <laughs> and that's what it was. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, uh, like an- another title that, you know, we kind of talked about once before was on, on the original Nintendo was Ninja Guy Dead. I mean, this is probably my favorite, or one of my favorite NES games. So the price we looked at here is a sealed copy. I have a loose copy. I don't need the sealed one. I'd like one, but I don't need it. Back in July, um, we looked at the peak, too. The peak was higher than this, so pre-July 2022, it was higher. It dipped to 123 in July of 2022, which is the last time we did a video about pricing. That was for a sealed copy of Ninja Gaiden. Today, a sealed copy, I'm sorry, complete in box, complete in box copy of Ninja Gaiden, 123 in July, 101 today. So it lost about $22 in value, which doesn't sound mm-hmm. like a lot, but if you look at the percentage, that's a large percentage of the game's value. If it was only going for that much, you know, it's lost probably about, I don't know, 18% of its value in six months. That's significant. Yeah, it, you know, it, it is. And, it, and it's, it's a little surprising. It's a little surprising. It is, because it's sealed. I mean, not sealed. It's it's complete, you know? And then, like, any... Dude, for you guys who are really young, I don't know, nobody kept their boxes during the NES game, man. Like, <laughs> nobody. Everybody, threw the, if you were lucky, you kept the manual, like, in the plastic sleeve. But mm-hmm. everybody threw away the boxes. So I, I don't understand how this game is only, like, 100 bucks. For a complete box. Yeah, because the cardboard got tore up and, you know, it, it's funny. I We actually had somebody bring in a bunch of Nintendo game boxes. Just the boxes? Just the boxes. Just the boxes. Did you, you know, guys buy them? Uh, yeah, we did. Oh, the, yeah. The, the, the crazy thing is somebody had, like, Pokemon, like the original Pokemon for Game Boy, like, just the boxes. Like the box for Pokemon Blue, it's like two hundred dollars. It's more just than the, the game. More than the game. Just, yeah. That's crazy. But again, it's just no. Like you said, no one, no one kept the boxes. They would rip them open. They get squashed, you know, tossed around, and then eventually they got thrown in the trash. Yeah, it's just like the consoles. Like I didn't keep all the boxes of all my consoles, unfortunately, but I do have some of like, you know. Some of the bigger ones, you know, I have like my Dreamcast box back there, which is one of the older boxes that I have. I don't have my NES box, man. Nope. So no. few. That, that's why the boxes go for so much because the people who want to collect complete in box, they want that. And they're, they're way harder to get because the majority of people threw that crap away <laughs> in the trash. In the trash. 
the, the that cardboard is worth hundreds of dollars now. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> You know, but we got, you know, so we talked about a few increases, a few decreases, but then some stuff stayed the same. It did. So this was the new one that we looked at. We haven't looked at this in the previous videos, but this is Mario Kart Double Dash. Again, we picked this because it's a pretty common GameCube game, but it's also mm -hmm. if you go if you went out and bought our GameCube today, this would be a game that you would want to get for your GameCube. So that's why we picked it. It was like a common game that everybody would want. Let's see where the prices are at on that. In the past six months, it stayed pretty stagnant. So we're looking at $65 then, $65 now. There was off by some pennies, but we're not going to get into all that. It's basically $65. Now, what's interesting, that game would have sold for $50 on GameCube because games were going for $50 back then. But it still has lost value over time because if you counter inflation in, $50 back then was worth way more than $65 today, I'm sure. I'm not going to go do the math for you guys, but it's still kind of interesting that it's that high, higher than what you would, higher than what you would have paid for it back then, um, not counting inflation. Yeah, it's, uh, but Mario Kart is such a good game though, I'm just thinking, it's like, it's like when we have a GameCube, I mean, usually people come in asking for Mario Kart. Mario Kart, Smash Brothers. Wind Waker. Wind Waker, yeah, and Zelda's, you know. So it's, you know, it's still a very popular game. And, and, and I'm glad it's not super crazy expensive so that way more people can actually enjoy it. Yeah, and plus, I, I don't know that this was ever re-released. Perhaps it wasn't like, during the Wii U, it might have been like on like the uh, eShop. Or something like that, but I don't recall this game ever being re-released. Maybe I'm wrong about that. You guys can correct me in the comments, but you certainly can't go on your Switch and play Double Dash. No, <laughs> that's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah, man, we got to keep up. We got to keep our eyes on on the prices going forward for 2023. Um, you know, you think that they're going to continue to drop? You think they may, you know, start to rise and spike again as the weather's get nice or what, what are you thinking? So, again, looking just looking at price charting as uh, as a tool to gauge where we're at, we have to get back to pre-pandemic levels, and we are not there yet. So, my assumption is they're going to, at least in the next six months, they're going to continue to drop. Inflation is okay. still rising. A recession is happening, whether the government mm -hmm. wants to admit that or not. <laughs> We're in a recession, people. Wake up. It's it's around us. Yes, they're going to drop. That's my answer. They're going to drop over the next six months. What do you think? Um, I I think they're gonna they're gonna take a slower decline decline. I don't think they're gonna rapidly drop. I agree um, with that too. It is gonna yeah. be a slow decline. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a slow decline. Uh which which is which is okay, you know, which is good because it'll hopefully it'll attract more people to video game collecting. Right? You know, um, so and, they can actually that purchase will, and enjoy. That will make it go back up again. Back up. Well, yeah. If, if we get a lot of people that jumped on, like like uh, during COVID, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna skyrocket again. But at this point in time, for twenty twenty three, hopefully, again, it attracts more people to the hobby because it is a fun hobby, especially if you're gonna buy them and enjoy them and play them. It's such a fun hobby. My hope is. Pretty much what you said, um, but younger people, I'm going to bring a personal story into this real quick before we end things. My nephew is young, clearly, and I'm old, clearly. Um, he's probably 16 years old, I believe, um, maybe 15. So he was playing... Far Cry 4 the other day. Mm. And I was like, dude, you're playing Far Cry 4? It's like Far Cry 6 is out. I was like, is that I, I was I asked him, I was like, is that is that game is that a retro game to you? And he was <laughs> like, Oh yeah, this is old, man. <laughs> I was like, Yeah, your old games aren't the same as my old games, are they? He was like, nah. 
So, I mean, my hope with this is, you know, as prices go down, mm-hmm. is he loves games. People like him, I'm hoping, will start entering that market, you know, as he gets older, when he turns 20, you know, and he gets a job and starts having, like, money that he can, you know, disposable income. I hope he goes back and plays some of the stuff that he missed because he was too young for it, you know. I hope I can be like, hey, go... Yeah. Go pick up an NES and go play as you got it. Just do it. Let me know how it is. But yeah, I feel man. like I feel like we're just gonna get aged out. That's what's gonna happen, and no one's gonna care about the <laughs> NES anymore you know, than the Super Nintendo. And we're just gonna... I don't know, man. Because it's like you know, in the store, I there's a couple regular customers that I get that are young, that are in I would say late teens, very very early twenties. That come in and they buy the retro stuff. They buy the Nintendo. They buy the Super Nintendo. That's awesome, you know, man. They that buy would the like PlayStation. make me so happy just to see that. <laughs> you know, so they they appreciate the retroness and 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 the nostalgia that comes with those games. You know, and we have we have good conversations. You know, they're like, you know, yeah, I'm too young to uh, to appreciate these, but I'm doing it now. You know, so Did you like, ever ask them like how, like what got them in like why why are like what got them to that point to be interested in that? One I did. One of them uh, was like he's always liked games. You know he grew up in the 360 Wii era, uh, so he loved games. And as he got older to make his own money, he really wanted to dive into the whole to the to whole video game experience so he wanted to go back and and relive stuff that that he's never played that he's never heard of uh you know stuff that he's heard a lot of talk about you know but okay so he wants to experience it now so his experience is going to be totally different than mine because i lived through it and it was fantastic and a a lot of those games hold a lot of nostalgia for me because i can look at a game and remember exactly what i was doing and how i felt so for him it's something brand new so I just, you know, and, and I just hope he, you know, the younger generation, like, really appreciate it. Because without those games, we wouldn't have the new games. Exactly. Yeah, man, I hope my nephew, you know, gets a little bit older, gets that money. He's like, yo, what should I, what should I get? I got this money sitting here. I'm picking up this Genesis. What should I buy? Oh, man, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. So if you're younger and you're listening to this, you know, hit us up. Send us a message over on YouTube. You can, you know, send us a DM. I'm on Twitter. You guys can follow me at from NJ2CA. The two is the number two. You guys can hit me up on there. I'll tell you what to play from back in the day. I got no hair left. I can tell you what to play from back in the day. <laughs> Wes has more hair than me, and he's older than me. <laughs> um, Wes, if people want to follow you, where's the best place for that? You can follow me on Instagram at Grendel5XBX. Uh, and again, you know, if anybody is in the Atlantic City, South Jersey area, you know, stop at Level Up Entertainment at the Hamilton Mall. You know, let's talk. Let's talk video games. You know, I love talking about video games. That's right. It's a passion above all else. If you guys want to follow the company, it's at Enthusiast. You can follow us on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook. We're on all those things. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to us uh, on YouTube at Five-star reviews, podcast services, definitely help us out. Please go ahead and do that. And support us over on Patreon if you guys like what you heard today. Patreon.com slash Nerdthusiast. You can support us for as little as $1 a month, and we would truly, truly appreciate it. Finally, thank you guys so much for watching this show. We really appreciate it. And until next time, you guys take care. Have a good one, guys.